Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're going to be checking out Visual Studio Code and we're going to be adding local AI to it. So it's going to be analyzing our code. It's going to be writing our code. It's going to write code for us. It's really, really cool using local AI. Nothing gets sent to the cloud. It's all private and you're not using up their credits just using up your compute. So that's pretty good to me. There's three main ways to do it. And we're going to be using all three main ways. We're sharing everything. First one is we're going to be using GitHub Copilot, except we're going to be running our models locally, not sending anything to the cloud. There's also Microsoft AI toolkit. That one's more, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. And there's also an open source one called continue. And that one also allows you to explain the code, write code for you, do all this kind of cool stuff. We're going to be hooking up our local AI to it. And we're even going to be doing distributed compute with it, which means I'm going to be combining my MacBook Pro with my MacBook Studio, which means I can inference even larger models locally using both those guys together. And we're also going to be inferencing over the network. So that means you could even host your own private AI studio on the internet and just have that as your inferencing situation happening over there. So enough talk, let's jump on into Visual Studio and see how we go. So I've got Visual Studio running on macOS and I've also got it running on Windows. So it does work on both. Let's jump into macOS first. And this is a nice fractal demo that I've actually got the AI to write for me. And I was happy, happy with that. So let's just see how it works. So with Visual Studio, out of the box, you get GitHub Copilot installed by default. If you don't already have it, you can go into the extensions tab here and GitHub Copilot chat. There's an update available. You can pretty much install it. Now, one thing I do recommend with Visual Studio, in case you don't know, if you go into settings, you go check out telemetry, because I figured you guys are local people. You probably don't want telemetry going out there. You need to turn that off. And secondly, to get GitHub Copilot chat working, you also want to type in Olama and you're going to be adding in your server URL here. But we're going to get to the setup at the end of the video. For now, we'll just demonstrate it in action and it rocking. So with GitHub Copilot, you can just grab a piece of code here. You right click and just click on explain. Now we've hooked up already remotely. Our, this is Quen3 Coder for ATB. It's a large, large model. And we've also enabled a distributed compute version of GPT OSS, which means our MacBook Pro and Mac Studio are going to be combining together to run that a lot more easy. So it's now going ahead and using the connection that we made into Visual Studio to explain the code for us. If we jump into Inferencer, which is the application we're using for all this local LLM stuff, we can see that it is doing a background generation. And it's actually kind of fun because I'm in a virtual container over here that is pointing to my MacBook Pro. And my MacBook Pro is actually pointing to my Mac Studio. So we're doing a lot of jumps over the show just to show you that it's all network capable. So our Quen3 coder is inferencing away. It's made a little explanation as to what is going on. Now, again, I can switch over to GPT OSS and I can even use Claude and all this stuff and stuff. Now, one thing to note with GitHub Copilot is that it, you do require an account. You can get a free account and they give you some credits to use per month, but there you go. And you can continue to chat to it. So I'm saying, oh, that sounds good. Can you make it better? So in the background here, we got our local copy of Inferencer running on my MacBook Pro. It's doing a background generation remotely to my Mac Studio. So my Mac Studio, I've connected that over here. It's also doing a, back, a background generation. And if we look into it, that is the guy that is going to be inferencing away. That's what's using the graphics card over here. And memory wise, we can see that that model uses 370 gigabytes. So it's huge. So there you go. It's saying I'll help improve your Mandelbrot set generation code. First, let me check the current file structure. So it's going through my file, figuring out what's going on. And it's all integrated there into Visual Studio Code. And it's saying that it's going to optimize the code by vectorizing the operation. So rather than us doing things one by one, it's going to be doing all in vectors. So with GitHub Copilot, you do get this option to apply in editor. So I'll click that. I'm going to add it to awesome.py. And hopefully, boom, just like that, it's rewrote my class. It's rewrote my file and we get to choose to keep or undo the changes. I'm going to click keep and we can see this is what it looks like now. There you go. We've got some nice zoom controls. It's rewrote that just live. You can go ahead and play with different parts of the code, figure it out. So that's GitHub Copilot works out of the box, all the kind of stuff. There's also next up, we're going to be checking out AI toolkit for Visual Studio Code. 
but you click on this icon here. It's got a lot of adverts for you to pay for models, but I've got it set up with a Llama and OpenAI endpoints. So we've got, got Quen3 Coder over there. You double click it and you've got Playgrounds. So you can say, hello, Quen. You can ask it questions about the code. It's more like a chat interface, this one, but it does have some cool features. Like for example, it's got something called an agent builder. It's got an evaluation tool. So with the evaluation tool, you can give it sample queries and run it with different models on your system to see what kind of results you get. So you get comparison tools and it's got a lot of things you can get in, into that situation. So that's all set up and running and we're all also using it locally. And the last one we're gonna be looking at is continue. This one's an open source AI code agent and it's got a llama compatibility. So that's what we hooked ourselves into. So continue is just over there. So we're going to go back to our code, awesome.py. And with this one, you get shortcut keys. So there's command L and you can say, explain this function. It's going to go ahead and utilize the model that we've picked. So we've picked Quen3 Coder again. So it's running over here on our computer, doing a background generation remotely to the server. And you can even Instead of doing ask, instead of having a conversation with it, you can press Command I, and that one allows you to change the function. So make it more awesome. So now this isn't a chat interface, more of a generate interface, and it's going to be rewriting this code block for us. Like right there, it's got a whole bunch of changes to the file, and you get to choose if you want to accept or reject the changes over there. So I'm click accept, accept except, except, I'm except, accepting everything. It's a, a Black Friday special. Looks the same to me, but maybe it has changed. Maybe it looks, something's happened basically. Can you make it rotate? So except, except, it looks like it's putting some rotation code. Let's run that in then. And look at that, it's rotated the image for us. So this is kind of like a way to rewrite your code using prompts and it's all built into Visual Studio. Now this was on the Mac, but again, it also works on Windows. So again, I'm gonna use GitHub Copilot. That one's clicked out, but except instead of using Quen3 Coder, I'm gonna be using a distributed compute. We're gonna use my MacBook Pro combined with my Mac Studio to run GPT OSS. And I'm gonna say fix, let's just say generate code fix, make it better. Let's just see what it does. So it's gone ahead and rewrote that function for me and I get to accept it or close it. So that's the after and previously that was the before. Just wrote that for me, that's GitHub Copilot. It was using distributed compute, open AI GPT OSS, all built into Visual Studio running local AI. So to set it up, this is what you do. I'm using Inferencer version 1.7.3. If you go in there, you go into the server tab and you click on serve and you set up a server and you gotta have a Llama or open AI compatibility. For GitHub Copilot, Llama is the one that works. For Microsoft AI Toolkit, you wanna to be using open AI. And for continue, that one uses Llama. But basically if you tick those two, you're good. You got disable SSL encryption so you can work with those packages. And if you do want to combine your computers together, you allow distributed compute. And if you want to host it on the internet, you allow internet connections. By default, it only allows IP connections using over your local area network. So if you don't take that, you're, you're safer than having randos from the internet trying to use your resources. So my server is started up, so that's up and running. If you go into the connect tab, you can verify your server settings. And this is all the links that you use. So if you want to see all of the models we're supporting, the tags one is Olama's API. So you just type in curl and these are all the models. It looks kind of daunting. You can also do open APIs models endpoint, to see what you got. So curl that one, and these are all the models that we support. So these are all the models that are on my computer. The remote ones are the ones that are on the remote server I'm connected to, because I'm this computer's, my Mac Pro is also connected to my Mac Studio. And the distributed ones are the ones that have mo the same model on both of these computers. And you can see all the models here. So to hook them up in GitHub Copilot, you go into code and then settings and search for Olama. And then this is your URL that your Olama is hosted on. We're using Olama compatible APIs on our server. So we're gonna be using this URL, paste it in there. And then in GitHub Copilot, 
if we just launch that up, the side window. If you click on the bottom here and then manage models, you click on Olama and it'll give you a list of all the models that the endpoint supports. So I've enabled Quen Free Code, the big one, and I've also enabled GPT OSS. I can go ahead and enable the smaller one, the smaller Quen Free Coder, click OK. And now in that list, I've got the smaller distributed version of that Quen Free Coder. I'll say, hello, is this file cool? And if we check here, we got a background generation, which is what it was working on when I launched it. I'll close that down. But we've also got distributed generation, which means both of our computers are combining together for it. And it's as easy as that, just all set up for you. Sometimes when you click on manage models and Olama, nothing actually appears. So all you have to do is just click manage models and then Olama, click on it a second time. Worst case scenario, you can do command shift P and reload window. And that will just reboot your window. On Windows, you do control shift P and do the same thing. So if I click on manage models this time, it appeared, but sometimes the first time around, it doesn't appear. Just little bugs here and there. This is the state of play as it is today. So that's GitHub Copilot all set up for you. To set up, I guess the next easy one to set up is continue. That one, you just install it. And if you go into the settings, I'm going to click on models, configure. That will launch its YAML file. Now this YAML file is huge by default. So what you want to do is strip it down to the basic one auto detect or llama auto detect and you need to add in an api base and you give your url the url of the computer you want to connect to for your old llama connection so typically if it's your own computer you just type in local host and be done with it but because i'm actually connecting to my computer over the network or well, my virtual machine is connecting to my machine just to demonstrate that you don't have to do it locally on a machine, you can have your own edge kind of situation. As soon as you save that, it's gonna go ahead and request the models and they should appear here in this list. Now with this guy, you just get access to all of the models. You don't pick which one you wanna use, but once it's set up, it's pretty, pretty cool because you can just say like, con command I make this more fun and save it to a file. And I'm going to select Quen, Quen 30B. I'm going to run it distributed again over both computers. Now for this model, it's small. I don't need to run it over both computers, but I'm just showing it running over both computers to demonstrate that it can be used for even bigger models. Now, one thing I don't like about these tools is that you're very just like waiting around to see what's going on. Like if you use the application directly inferencer, you get like a loading screen, you know what's going on. You get tokens per second, you know exactly what's going on. So what I personally like to do is just copy the code in and then paste it in. And that way I know what I'm doing. But when you're doing things in the background here, you're kind of just waiting around to see what's going on, what's gonna happen. So here it's out, it's written out a main.py, it's still generating it. This enhanced version includes modern Python, hints, data classes, and it's got awesome features. And at the top here, I can just click on create file and save it. And it's made an awesome application report. The new is more awesome. Maybe I should have chosen a bigger model, <laughs> but it's happy with itself. And the final one is a Microsoft AI toolkit. So AI toolkit for Visual Studio Code. You install that one. This one's a bit more trickier to set up, but we'll do it nonetheless. So you click on models catalog and it's gonna show you all of the models available. So there's two different models it supports. One is Olama and bring your own model that uses the open AI endpoint. So you click on that and it says enter open AI compatible chat completion endpoint. So I'm going to go inside inferencer over here, go into server and go into my XPro local. This is my server instance running on this machine. I can see from the open AI endpoints, I want to be using the chat completions one. So I'll copy that and I'll paste that in there enter the exact model name as in the API, go back into inference over here. I can see these are all the models I have available. I'm just gonna run a small one just to get it going. So I'll paste that in there. API key, there isn't one, so I've just wrote X. So now the model should appear in my models list over here. So I should have Llama 3.2, double click on that. Say, hello, Llama, if that is your real name. And I am talking to my computer and it's given the results straight away. And you can just use any model that you please. So I chose Llama 3.2, but I can also pick 
a distributed version. So again, let's do the GPT OSS 120B. Yes, I don't have that installed, so that's perfect. So I click on models again, press plus, and I can do the custom model here with the open AI endpoint, except this time around, I'm gonna do a Llama model. So I'll click on that one and select models from all Llama library or choose an Llama endpoint. I'll choose the endpoint and I'll just paste in my IP address. And here are all the models I can pick from. It's already hooked up, so I don't need to manually copy and paste in my models. So I'm gonna choose, let's choose Quen, you know, let's do Minimax remotely. So I'm bouncing it off my MacBook Pro to my Mac Studio. If we're in Minimax, select that one. And it's just appeared over there, just like that. There's a compare option. So I'll click compare it with Llama 3.2 and say, write a Python code to tell the time in so we ran 3.2 really quickly. I'm actually comparing 3.2 with 3.2. So I'm going to be comparing Minimax with Llama 3.2. So first let's do the Minimax generation. So we're going to be waiting around a little tiny bit for Minimax to load into memory. That's probably the slowest part of this situation. But once it's loaded, it's going to inference away. And if you do reuse the model that's already loaded into memory, you won't have to wait around for it to load. But for now, there you go. It's loaded up and it's doing pretty, pretty fast. Can't complain, it's pretty out over a thousand characters. And one of these things about these um, extensions that you use, they give a large system prompt as it is. So it's a lot of things, but as you can see, it's thinking about it, it's figuring it away, and then it's gonna do a comparison with Llama 3.2 and hopefully it's gonna blow its socks because that guy's like 200 gigs and this one's three gigs. So there you go, three different ways to integrate local AI into your Visual Studio Code. Again, I'm using InfraSol version 1.7.3. should be out very, very soon. And, you know, a new way to code. Again, personally, I just like copy and pasting in and finding out exactly what I'm doing, giving it the context that I want exactly, giving it the exact context I want to give it. Because sometimes when you give it too much, it does go a bit crazy, especially if you add in tool calls. <laughs> There's a new feature called Allow Tool Calls. And I found that. I'm not asking a model about Swift and it randomly starts going onto Apple's website and just getting the latest documentation, see if anything's changed. That's a, a fun experience with these models. But let me know what you guys think. And actually, one more sneak peek. This is currently on macOS, but we do actually have a Windows version. Maybe I can give you a little preview. So over here, this is the Windows version. Runs exactly the same as the Mac OS. You even got the token inspection and the models list. It's close to release. If you guys are interested in it, let me know and I can prioritize it and release it very, very soon. And also if you're a Mac guy, not Visual Studio Code, this stuff also runs in Xcode with Xcode Intelligence where it can also do its agentic features and rewrite code for you. In the future, it's gonna get better. Let me know what you guys think. Hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show. It's live. It's random my code for me. I don't even need to make this application anymore. It's gonna make it for me. Make this application for me.